Sorry, I can Good, because I haven't set that up yet, yeah. so I'm not no, going to take the time to do it. Felt like hot hands came in from friggin' little giants. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you get a suck on your yeah. shirt and you fall down, yeah. we'll know if you're alive. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Candlepin fans. This is Dan Castle from Ryan's Family Amusements in Millis, and tonight we have a special uh, playoff match um, with the A uh, the South Division is playing for the championship. So at the beginning of the season, we started with 16 bowlers who bowled 18 matches. We ended up with eight that made the playoffs, four made the second round, and now we're down to two. I'm here with big veteran bowlers Matt um, Matt Rich and uh, Dan Esdale, and let's meet the bowlers. So on the left is our number two seed, Tim Douglas. Tim is uh, from Alley Cat Lanes in King, uh, Kingston, Mass. He has a 120.44 average, and his record for the year was 180 and 72. And on the right is Justin Waters, the number one seed for the year. With a 202 to 50 record, he bowls out of Millis here. And he has a 127.34 average. So good luck, gentlemen. And the next ball is live. So my color commentators today joining me um, again are Matt Rich, veteran bowler, longtime bowler with uh, me in many leagues, and Dan Esdale, who is the winner of the B South Division Championship. And uh, both are excellent bowlers. We'll be providing color commentary. I'll start with the play-by-play. -play. Matt, our Justin is the home bowler. He prefers to go first. So here's his first ball. Justin's on the head pin and punches out uh, five pins. He's left with his clipped spread eagle. Right on the head pin, just a little too perfect that time. Justin looking at work this out. Went to the left that time. I, I don't know if he did it on purpose or not. He might have been trying to kick the other two over. What do you think, Dan? Uh, no, I've heard the rule that you go, if there's two and three, you go for the two. I usually don't follow that. That's, That's a great nine. Out. nine. Yeah, real good nine. That's a nine there. So the format of today's match uh, is unlike our regular season where the bowlers bowl five games, four points. They're bowling five games but it's all about total pins today. There's no points for winning a game. The winner is decided by the total at the end of five games. And then the winner of this match will go on to meet Keith Beaupre, who is the champion of the North A Conference. And Justin throws off to the right. He's on a three pin. He just takes out four. He's left with the four horsemen left plus two. Just a bit off on the head there, but know anything about Justin, he's going to give us a good run. On the head pin, you know, a little full, you know. On production today, we have Micah Imperato, and he's posting this live to Twitch. The recording will be posted on the ACSC Facebook page and on the Candlepin Bowling Network. Justin uh, ends up with another nine box, so he's 18 after two boxes. Okay, we're coming into box three. Justin's throwing about 36 miles an hour so far. On the three pin again. And it looked like it was going to be the same leave as before, but the wood took out the two. How are you going to shoot that, Matt? Yeah, you know what? That's not so bad. It goes from being almost a half whistle. To just you want to just hit the head pin here and let the wood do its work behind it. You think the wood might deflect that ball over, Dan? Let's see. It's quite possible. You gotta be on your object though. Yeah, I think he, he missed to the right, so he's open in the third box, looking at the one and a four only. Great 10 out of that. Nice 10 box. So that puts Justin at 28 after three. Three open boxes, looking for two marks in the next.
next two boxes. The bowlers are bowling five boxes at a time, starting on lane 18. And after they've both completed their first half, they'll switch over to lane 17 for the second half of each game. We'll repeat this all throughout the match. Justin in a fourth box. On the head pin, a little full. He's got the eight, seven and eight left with some wood. The wood's a little tricky out in front. I think you go right at the eight pin. You go straight for the eight two, Dan? Well, that's real tough. Might yeah. try and catch the cap on that back piece. He has options. There yeah, it goes. Got There's the cap. And Justin got one of them. That's the first spare of the match. He took the cap and got the 7 8. Uh, open no longer. So now he's at 38 plus the ball in the fourth box. All right, box five. This is a fill ball. In the right-hand pocket, took out eight, so that leaves him at 46 after four, and he's got the four and the eight pin to shoot at. His last two boxes, he's really found the head pin well, right in that pocket, in the one in the pocket. Dan here is keeping track of head pins. Oh! Snuck that one out. Looked like it was going to be an open box, but he's got a spare in the fifth, and Justin Waters will sit down with 56 plus a ball after five. He had three open boxes and two spares. And how was his head pin count looking? Uh, three hits on the head pin, two splits to show for, but he made one of them. All right, now we get to see Tim Douglas, uh, also known as the Tornado. One of the fastest balls in the game. And uh, Tim, as well as Justin, at any moment could throw a huge game at you. On the first ball, on that head pin, and would you believe this? He's got the same lead that Justin had on his first ball, which is a spread eagle minus a seven pin. He's got some wood here. Where are you going, Matt? You know, you can go either side. It's really wherever you feel more comfortable. You might want to play the wood side just because it, it might bounce off the wall and help you a little bit. It was, it was behind, so I don't know what I really wanted to do. Yeah, he went down the middle. I, my hunch was that he was trying to take, the, take everything over off the wall. All right, so Tim has a eight box to start. Opening the first. And his ball speed's too fast to register on the machines here. They, they, they only go up to 40. Another head pin hit on box two. And he's got a split. He's got the three, four, and six pin. No wood to play with. I know Tim has consistently been clocked between 44 and 46 miles an hour. Okay. Oh, oh, what a good. shot that was. Timmy takes it off the wall and brings it over. That was beautiful. I would have split it if I was lucky. I might not hit it. Great shot. Incredibly the inside of the three pin, send it off the wall. Perfect. The fans will see about as good a bowling as you can see nowadays for these guys. So 18 in this ball, and that ball's a nine. So Timmy has 27 after two. Gives him a nine pin lead in completed boxes versus Justin. He's got just the four pin to shoot out. That's so careful that one on the right. It's a clean. Who needs wood? Spare in the third for Tim Douglas. That's 37 plus a ball after two. Remember, Justin is at 56 plus a ball after five. On the head pin, and they all went down. That's a strike. Three marks in a row. First strike of the match. Tim is hitting early and hitting often. It's amazing, Dan. You know, both these bowlers, you know, they throw so hard, but they're so accurate. I had the pleasure of bowling Justin Tuesday night. Let's just say I'm glad it wasn't on video. <laughs> so Tim's at 57 plus two balls going into the fifth box. Oh, he's off the head pin that time. That's okay. He gets 
six to start. A one, two. Is that the five? Yeah, five? five yeah. I don't think that's five. That's eight. Eight and seven. And that's a nine fill for 66 at four. And just one pin to shoot at. That's uncharacteristic, but a nine box for Tim for 75. Uh, a great start, definitely putting pressure on Justin early. A lot of bowling to go through. Justin's on a fill, he's at 56 plus this ball, and Tim's at 75. Any comments yet? So on the fill ball, box six. Justin's on a three again, he takes out seven, so that finishes the fifth box of 63. He's got the one, two, and 10. Inside, inside, or you're splitting, guys? Trying to split, yeah. Try and kick the head pin into the 10 pin. To give a better up. Oh, he, he went the inside. He took the one and a 10 and left the two. I was gonna say, yeah, you probably want to split the one and two. Just to make sure you get the two. Justin's yeah. ball tails right a little bit though, so that makes sense. Go that way. Yeah, I've noticed that he's got the uh, left right hook, and that's a nine yeah. box for Justin, 72 after six. So we'll talk a little bit about how these playoffs have gone so far. I've got a few of the stats here, and um, Dan, you had a great run this year, and you're not done yet. Not done yet. We're going to talk about that. Just in a box seven. Still going. Oh, well, there we go. What, what do you? Is there some uncharacteristic slow pin action for Justin? Usually they all go fast, and they all, you know, let's say he took out eight on that first ball. Just made that shot a whole lot easier. Yeah, that looked ugly. I thought he was going to have a banana split. Six and ten. And a mark for Justin Water in his, in his seventh, 82 plus the ball. He wants to get some more marks here. We'll play the capital with it. It's a tough, tough thing to do when you try to do it. Justin is a fierce competitor. He's thrown some big, big matches this year. I think uh, you may have some of his stats this year. Um, I'm not sure. Um, we'll pull those up and talk about some of the big games that have been thrown this year. Justin's on the head pin. Eight and a fill, that gives him 90 at seven, and he's got a 7-10 split and a bunch of wood. <laughs> and I don't know that there's any good way to shoot this one. Right, Wood? Yeah, you gotta go towards the 10 pin, see if something spins on yeah. the wall. Right, so what he does, and uh, it moved, some of it moved to the left, but he just got the 10 pin, so he'll be open in the eight. This is an ugly piece of wood in front of the seven. And he misses it, so it's a nine box. Justin's at 99 at eight. So these two bowlers have met a few times before. Um, They've met at least once during the season. It might have been twice. I think it's once. They're two different. Yeah, they've met once. Early this year. That's right, because the, the 16 bowlers bowl 18 matches. They're broken into groups of four. You bowl everybody in your group twice. Right. And everybody else once. Right. Which uh, I did in my division. I'm in the C division. And uh, so, Justin on. Oh, we don't like to see that. That's a spread eagle plus a nine pin, so right on the head pin. I hate it when that happens. You guys ever said a bad word when you did that? I say it all the time when I do it. In my match against Mike Capone a few weeks ago. <laughs> what a shot! Wow! So, so not to brag, but back in November, I had that leave in one of my leagues, and I, I did say a bad word, and um, I went to the left like he did, and I actually got the spare. 
It'll probably never happen again. Nine box for Justin, 108 after nine. That's a real good nine out of that. Yeah, that's usually about the best outcome you're going to get out of there. You throw a good ball like that. Justin looking for a big finish. Yeah, he, he, he really wants to not leave any pins on his deck. Timmy coming out to a real hot start. Oh, that looked like it should have been a strike, but the pin went in front of the five pin. So the king stands alone. All the pins are down but the five. Just one to shoot at for a mark. Still the same ball. Easy, right? Yeah, you keep doing that, you'll get some strikes in here. And there it is. No doubt. 118 plus a ball. Puts a big fill on this. He'll force Tim to throw at least one mark in the second half to keep up with him. He's giving some uh, coaching to the pins here. He gets uh, six in the fill for a 124 string for the first string for Justin. Now Tim Douglas comes up on lane 17 to start the second half of game one. He's a 75 after half. And he's looking to put the hammer down on Justin here. That was a great ball. Um, big splash. He's right in the right hand pocket. He takes out everything but the four pin with some wood in front of it. Or is that the two? Four pin. That's just what every bowler wants. Yeah. One pin with a plank in front. If you don't get a strike, that's the next best thing. Yep. That, then you get a nice juicy spare, and all of the worst thing is then missing it. <laughs> But he didn't miss that time. That puts him at 85 plus a ball at six. Look at that. Big ball. Eight in a fill. It gives him 93 at six. And he's got the five and the, and the seven with a little wood that I don't think that's angled very well. What do you think, guys? He has like something it. fancy up his sleeve. Yeah. Well, Tim's got a lot of power. That makes a big difference here. Yep, he was trying to be a, give us a trick shot. Huh? I think he was he was looking for the, the left side of that cap, maybe bounce it off the wall, take it off. Ooh. Look at that! Wow, Look at what that! A ten. What a shot! With with the, the with the speed that Tim throws at, he was able to make that pin go back and forth twice and then come back and take it out. One oh three after seven. On the two pin, he takes out six. He's left with the one three seven ten. Really not a bad lead. Just put the one three. That piece of wooden back's gonna help take the seven. The way his ball moves too. That should. Right there. Oh, he missed the head pin. Maybe. Pins are still moving. No, it's not coming back. So he'll be open in the eight. And the nine box, 112 after eight for Tim Douglas. So I know, Dan, you're looking at some statistics here. How were these guys matched up before? They had a match. Their last match was an alley cat earlier this year between the end of March and the beginning of April. Justin went 124, 113, 122, 139, 130 for a 628. Tim went 115, 132, 124, 114, 121 for a 606. Justin went 1, 10, and 4 on the points, which just proves that neither one of these guys can be counted out. No, I saw both. I, I've been following both these guys. So he, he has an open box in the eighth. And are you going to say, Matt? No, it's, Tim just made a great shot, even though he had a split. He hit it right where he wanted to. Took three out of the five. So an eight box for Tim. He slowed down a little bit in this half. He's at 120 after nine. 
he'll probably end up ahead in his string unless he throws a stinker of a box. But uh, it's not a blowout at this point for this game. Look, would you look at that? I thought that, again, that looked like a strike ball. He's on the head pin, and he's left with the 5, 8, 10, and he's got some wood in there that I think looks nice. I thought the 5 and 8 were both going to fall. They were wiggling pretty good. Yeah. I'd almost try and kick it towards the 8 and see if he can kick over that wood in the 5 and 8. No. Okay, I was thinking more toward the red line on the right. He went pretty much right at the five. So he'll be open in the 10. And a nine box. So it's a five pin game after the first game. Tim Douglas is at 129 and Justin Waters 124. With the first game down of the A South Conference Championship. The winner to face Keith Beaupre from the North at a time and place to be announced. Uh, it will be at a neutral house with the other two conferences, the other two divisions, I'm sorry. Uh, their championships will all be held the same day. We'll have three championship rounds that day. Game two, ball one. And Justin drops nine. This ball's been pretty consistently at 36 miles an hour, more or less. Well, in the first game, he was right in the 1-3 pocket. That one was in the 1-2 pocket. Nine. Nice plank in front too. No doubt about that when he had double wood, but didn't bother him at all. And he starts with a mark. So he's looking to really pile on right now. Both bowlers are, both are capable of it. Uh, Justin. Um, I'm back here. And a nine fill. He's just everything but the two pins, so 19 after one. Back in the one three box. Another 36 and change ball, 36.7 at the pin. So about four or five miles an hour faster at the hand, according to Bob Lee's gun. Oh, he got it. I thought it was going to go past it. Justin has a very slight right to left turn on. Came right in and took it. He's got a huge amount. He's very accurate. I've, I've seen that so much. He, he doesn't miss too many shots. So 29 and, and a ball after two. We got a good crowd here watching. This is a match nobody wanted to miss. And Justin puts eight in the filth and leaves the two and the four. 37 after two. He really wants that word to push back a little bit. What do you think, Dan? Where are you going with it? Right He's at the two pin. Or Matt. He's right one. at the two pin. Oh, oh. oh, almost got it with the ball. Is he going to come back another time? No. no. He'll be open in the third. Yeah, I noticed he was more in the middle. Was, wasn't quite at the two. He was a little to the left, and I think the wood deflected more than it would have otherwise. Yeah. Yeah, it's a tough piece of wood to play when it's that far out. Very tangled that way. Very tough. It, yeah, they, it, it's visually, it looks like, okay, this should be a reasonably easy shot. But as you, after you bowl a mile, you see those, it's like, oh, this is this can be tough. So he, he ends up with a 10 box, and that's 47 after three. So that's that's best possible outcome out, out of that situation. And now we're going into fourth. Still a great start. Okay, he's off the head pin, and he drops seven, and he's left with the one, six, seven. He's a wood behind the six. I don't know that that helps, but you guys might be able to make that work. Either side of the head pin. Give it a try. <laughs> the way Justin's ball tails. Try and get the other side there. Yeah. Oh, that was close. Great shot. Maybe just a little full. Yeah, he was close on that one. Just the seven pin left. Yeah, I, I saw a piece of wood go flying behind the seven, so he had stuff moving in the right direction. And he left his first pin on the deck for 56 after four. To get to this round, Justin defeated Ed Woodside, uh, who 
was a legend in the game. Um, that was a 613 to 567 match. Those guys put on a pretty good show too. Ouch. Justin's on the two pin and he gets a half whistler left, the two in the eight pin. It's pretty when it goes. I've seen both of you guys make this numerous times. I knew they made it some. That's how you make it. I know. Great ball. And there we go. Now we've seen Justin make it for a spare and a fifth. So Justin's three out of five on the spares. And he's only left one pin on the deck. And he's at 66 plus a ball after five. It's one of those balls I have to throw that. Why couldn't I do that first? <laughs> <laughs> Problem is, if you come up on the fill and punch it out again, that's really pretty aggravating. So Timmy's coming up on the first box of game two, and remember we're a five-pin game so far. And I can't see around it. Um, he's got the three and one. He's on the head pin. And he leaves, takes out six, and he's got the two, four, six, seven, and three. Tough, tough lead. Give it a good bid. He, he did, I think. He was trying to take off the wall, which I think is really about the only way you can get it most of the time. And um, it's gonna be open in the first. And a nine box. So as you can see on your screen, uh, Mike is running the scoreboard behind us and uh, that's on the left side. It's manually input as we go along. Tim drops eight. He's left with a three and a five. No wood. Just missed that. That wasn't much at all. I've been struggling with the twos myself. It drives me nuts. So to get here into this round, well, we'll finish this box first. 10 box for Tim Douglas, 19 after two. To get to this round, Tim defeated Charlie Collins in a great match in Kingston. Six went back and forth, right, went right down to the end, 623 to 607. A couple heavy ones right there. Speaking of heavy hits. It was pretty full on the head pin that time and uh, didn't get everything to go the way he wanted it to. He's got the four, seven, nine, ten. He's got some wood all over the place and this could be a makeable shot, I think. Play the, the double wood on the left? Yeah, with the way Tim throws it, you get to the right side of the red line. Yeah. Oh, he just clipped it and went by him. Yeah, I was thinking if he went like a little heavier on that wood, yeah. he's going to get a splash off the left and yeah. something to go over. I've seen him do that kind of stuff all the time, yeah. But he was thinking, you know, try the very right edge. Send it off the wall. Oh, a disappointing seven box. 26 after three. He's open for three boxes in a row. How's the head pin count going? Uh, this game, they're both at three right now. They both hit the head pin three times. Timmy with two splits to show for him. Nice by the wall. Yeah, he came in left to right that time, was on the left pocket he took out everything but the 10. We still don't know how fast he's thrown because it's too fast for the machine. Oh, I thought he did too. Well, speaking of his ball speed, I'm just glad we're behind him instead of in front of him. Just glad he has a good grip on it. <laughs> That's, that too, <laughs> we've seen that before. We had, we had, we, I don't know if you remember a couple of years ago, we had a bowler in the Wednesday Night League, uh, and he, uh, he, he, he was a little developmentally disabled, but he had a wicked backswing, and he loses grip sometimes. Then it turns into wee bowling. Yeah, and every, everybody's scrambling, trying to stay alive, you know? It's a lucky break for Tim off the head pin. Huge break. Got the whole spin on the right side to fall down. Nine drop. He's got just a seven pin. He's got wood out in front of it. He's got to make it move. All over it. Went straight for it. 
closes with a mark, so at the halfway point in game two, Tim Douglas is at 46 plus a ball, and now Justin's coming up on lane 17, and he's at 66 in a ball. He's got a 20-pin lead in this game, 15 overall in the match. Am I right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Double-checking. Make sure I didn't forget. I'm old, you know. I forget stuff. Like names. I forget names when you're right in front of me with it written down. Yeah. On the fill. Justin breaks up the split. That looked like it would be a split there. He got some great action. Puts nine in the spare on the fifth box and closes the half with 75. He's got you. Another great opportunity here for Justin. Is that the four pin? That's a four pin with some juicy wood in front of it. And a spare for Justin Waters. 85 in a ball at the sixth box in game two. They do. It makes me want to bowl. Not me. No? I'm watched that bowl. No, you... Then I got to bowl last of No, thanks. Yeah. Oh, no. It's better than bowling next one. Unless you get ahead of him for a little bit, then it feels good. Justin's on the fill. He saves himself from getting the Kamrowski special or the four horsemen. He's seven in the fill, 92 after six. And uh, speaking of the Kamrowski special, Rick Kamrowski is in the house tonight. I told him I was going to say that. And Justin goes wide to the right, misses a spare. Open in the seventh. Just the head pin left, right? My angle sometimes things look a little bit off. I'm a little bit off. You're doing all right, Dave. Thanks. Just checking in. <laughs> Justin's goes by the head pin. He's a one on one after seven. Not usually the best when you have the head pin at the last pin standing on the third ball, but nine's not bad. I'm pretty familiar with a head pin being the last one standing. I have an estranged relationship with a head pin. We're like two strangers passing in the night. Box eight. He's on a head pin that time. Takes out eight. But he's got the four and the six left. And it sounds to me like we're going to have to have some wall action here. Absolutely. You've got to play that wood in front of the four. Probably go to the right side of it, try to kick it left off the wall. Yeah. That's what he does. That's, that is a textbook shot. The crowd goes wild. Um, Justin makes a wonderful uh, spare in the eight and puts him at 111 plus a ball after eight punches. What a shot by Justin. That was great. Incredible. On the fill. He's on the head pin. Puts eight in the fill for 119 after eight. And he's got the two and the six. And so we're going to get to see another cool shot. A little wood on the side of the, the two pin there. Just don't sure. tap it. Oh, it didn't carry. He hit his object pin. So he'll be open in box nine and just a six pin to make a ten. And it's a gently dropped pin. I've seen him break a few of them recently. And uh, 129 after nine. So he's over his last string. We've got a really good group in here. We've, we've got uh, quite a few people here to watch. This is, uh, this is a match to watch. On the head pin, left hand pocket, he takes off seven. He's left with a three, six, ten. That's a good the best first ball he's thrown all half. A lot of action. How's he doing on well? How's he doing on head pin so Seven far? Seven head pin hits. Only two splits to show for it. Oh. Oh. How did he do that? Get two more of the wood than yep. the pin. Went around Went right the six. Around yep. He didn't say any bad words that I heard though. So I've heard him a few times. This is an R-rated show, so. Um, Justin closes with a 10 box and a 139 for his second string. And what's his total look like? 
All right, we'll get the total in a second. And uh, Tim Douglas comes up for box six of game two. He's on a spare. Justin, it's at 263 after two. 263 after two? Yes. And on a fill. And six in a fill, so that gives him 52. He's down 23 in the game so far. And he's got the four horsemen left. And Rick Hamrowski looking at that over from his vantage point. And it's gone. Perfect job. Right in the one-two pocket. And somewhere around here, I would not be surprised to see Paul Grant looking to collect a dollar for Rick Hamrowski's uh, special. I'm going to beat this to death. <laughs> All right. It's already dead. <laughs> That horseman is gone, huh? No. So, oh, yeah, that's definitely a gone horseman. All right, so he puts um, eight in the fill for 70 in the sixth box, and he's up against an open box, so a chance to gain some ground. Left with the 110 there. I think he might have rather had the oh. horseman. Yeah. <laughs> I thought he was going to get that. He took that off the wall. It came back. The ball went wide. He opened. And there's a 10, so 80 after 7 for Tim Douglas. He's down 21 in this match, or in this game. 16 in a match, right? Looking to catch up here. That'll help. That's a hammer. Great bomb by Tim. Uh, Tim's one of those guys, you know, when, when you need a mark, he's he's ready to bring it. He, he, he is, like, on demand. Just, just punch the order ticket. I guess I'm 90 and two balls after this, and potentially can't catch up on this one, can he? But he come, no, another 20, yeah, he could. If he, if he hit a triple, he'll be, or another strike and a nine, he'll catch up with. Justin in this box. He would, he would love to get a couple more marks. All right, he's on the head pin, takes out seven. Two, four, six. No eight. Bounce that one down there, just took out the two pin. He's got the four and the six left. I'd say I take one, but watching Tim Douglas pull, something could come off the wall anytime here. And uh, makes a field field goal, but it doesn't give you six here. Or three, sorry, three, 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 three. Too, too many sports in my head. I can't. I can't do this. One oh six after nine. Yep, he needs a big one. Here. It's only the second game. It's another bid at this. I haven't heard it shouted enough to be hit big on a mic, I don't think. This time he goes to the left. He's got the two and the six left. So he'll be open in a ten. And eight box, one fourteen in the second game. So Justin's in the lead now. And uh, right now we're at 263 to 243 in favor of Justin, a 20 pin lead in the match. Still lots of bowling left. Plenty of eight. Both of these guys can erupt at any second. 20 pins is nothing for these guys. All right, we're coming into box, into the third game. First box, Justin's up. He's all over it. And oh, that came in the left pocket. And I couldn't see it around Justin, but that's a, that's a fight. in the one too. Well, they, they went down so fast. <laughs> so he's on his way to a 300 if he keeps doing that, right? True. Well, you got to start with one in the first. All right, box two. Well, that time he's off to the right onto the three pin. He puts five in the first ball of the strike. He's got the Kaliri left, four horsemen left. 
plus a nine pin. My least favorite shot. I hate this shot. <laughs> My least favorite is a spread eagle, followed by the castle. Oh, he put a good bid on that one. He gets eight and a fill for 18 at the first box. He's now left with the seven and nine. You can't hate the shot you have to do that. It's just wrong. Well, that's, <laughs> that's why it's... That's why it is. It's because it used to piss me off so much. Oh, he tries to tries to cut it over, but he has a nine box. That's a great bid. There's three things that make me mad when I'm bowling. One is when I whiff a shot. But the second thing, like everybody else, is you throw a good ball and you get a spread eagle or something else like that. That's frustrating. That's why I don't play golf. Justin's on the three pin again, and he takes out seven. He's left with a one, nine, and ten. And speaking of golf, Justin's a golf pro. So, I don't know. we got to get it right or he'll be mad. Okay. The assistant club, the assistant professional at Marlboro Country Club. Okay. So his specific title, we got yes. it. Look at this. Oh, I got it. I knew he was going to make that. He's coming down the head pin. He makes a spare of the one, nine, ten. And I don't think he used any wood on that one. That was a 37 after three plus a ball. Oh. Watch the replay later on. I'm directly behind him, so it's a little hard to see some of this right away. Oh, yeah. And you can't fill it any better than that. That's a second strike in the first half of the string. So that puts a 10 in the fill for 47 after three, and he's now at 57 plus two balls. Justin's putting on a clinic. Yeah, you can see, if you're watching the video, you can see the pins better than I can because we have the pin cams down there, which are awesome. Micah does a great job on us. And the first ball on the fill, it's gonna be seven in the first ball. Justin's ball speed, if he drives it right at that red line, he should be all right. You agree, man? I, I'm thinking red line, too. Just drive it as hard as you can right yeah, at that. Yeah, you got to drive back. That double wood might be. No, he went to the left. I don't think he meant to. And he's expressed his displeasure at that shot. Couple of choice words. <laughs> he's, he's pretty good at that. So, seven and fill, 64 after four, still a great half going. He's over 70. Nothing to complain about there. Be nice to have a 90 half, though, I'm sure. And there it is, a 10 box in the fifth for Justin Waters, 74 at the half. And uh, put on a pretty good show there for that half. Oh, fantastic half. Yeah. Two strikes and a spare. And, you know, Justin's the kind of guy who's you know, still upset because there was one opportunity missed. I, I saw him getting pretty flaming the other day, and he's in the 150s, and it's like, <laughs> You know, you blew away your guy by 30 pins, that one. All right. First box, game three for that's Tim how, Douglas. That's how you get to be so good. You set high standards for yourself. He's, he's got a lot going for him. He's got a great physique, uh, great, uh, good long arm, both these guys. Good backswing. And Douglas, I thought that would have been a mark. Yeah, he hit that perfect. And he leaves the three pin. Unexpectedly. And there's a 10 box. So if you can't get a strike, let's get the spare. If you can't get the spare, let's get that 10. And that's what 10 box. You can't look behind and be let that shake you up when you miss a shot that should go. You just press forward. Box two. Just off to the left. Four horsemen right, one, three, six, ten. So I get the numbers down. Timmy hits this the right place, his ball takes Two full. Takes out just a head pin. So now he's got three to make a ten. Uh, which he does beautifully. So every pin's down. Two open boxes at 20 after two. Well, we have a quick minute. I saw some of the Twitch comments. Just a 
quick shout out to Micah's mom. Oh, hello, Micah's mom. And also, while we're doing this, at, at the same time, we have the TikTok ladies here uh, doing their candle pin bowling presentation. They get big viewership. They get 20, 30,000 people typically on these matches. Huge following. The ladies of cake. Oh. I had the pleasure of doing one of those a couple of weeks ago with them. It was a lot of fun. They may wave us over to come over and say hello, any one of us, so be prepared. So Tim's opening a third. He got unlucky there with that piece of wood in front of the two pins. So three, three ten boxes, spinning as be, as good as you can, and you're, you know it's a couple of spare opportunities that he just kind of got taken advantage of by the pins. Now he's up against a strike. There he goes. I had a distinct feeling that he was going to throw a bomb after that last couple of boxes. That looked like a hammer the whole way down. Yeah. Yep. 40 plus two balls against uh, Justin, 64 at this point. So a chance to gain some ground. And then he's up against an open box. You can almost feel those strikes from here, the power that he throws on those. Tim does something that I do sometimes too. You throw a strike, you wait for that ball to come back and throw it again. I watched him do that in a match a little bit ago. Look at that. Okay, nine in the, so far in the fill. Yeah, I, I caught him doing that a couple of matches ago. I was watching him do that. Drops a big ball, he keeps using that same one. Not in doubt at all, spare on strike. Tim's at 50 at four, 60 at five plus a ball. So I, I'm a little, anybody who's bowled next to me may have noticed me do this. I, I keep my balls in the same order the whole match through, and it really bothers me when somebody moves them because now they're out of order. I never noticed that, but now I'm going to bug you. Yeah. <laughs> I always start from in the middle, if there's a middle, and then they you know, just keep using them, rotate them. That way they wear even. Like Justin's on 74 after 5, and uh, in his 6 box, he... Goes right through the middle, and he's got a mini eagle. Two, four, three, six. I just made up that term as we're here. I never heard that. Neither did I. Oh, Whoa! Shot. What a bid. He put some heat on that one, and uh, just about got it. Only the three pin left. And a nine box, 83 after six. Well, if you can, I figure if you can't be good, be colorful a little bit. And uh, it's it's like why I've campaigned so hard after somebody called that leave the castle. And so I kept using it. It's like, I'm never gonna make the Hall of Fame for God's sakes. <laughs> uh, I can have some legacy. <laughs> Plus everybody swears at it anyway. Damn it, castle, they say, <laughs> as they get that. I'm okay with that. My oh, wow. speaking of swearing. Um, 189. I call that the W leaf. And the reason I call that the W is because it looks like a W down there. He's got the spread eagle plus the five pin. How that happens, nobody knows, but it will never happen in 10 pin. And Dan here is a 10 pin bowler and he knows. All right, not too bad. You can make a 10 out of this. Yeah. That's, That's a huge key. win. I saw he spared one time. I can't remember who did it, though. Probably Timmy. No, it was a while ago. I, I don't know who, who did it. It might have been Doucette. I'm not sure. Seven out of that one? Okay. You just move on to the next one. The good news was he was on the head pin, right? And he wasn't straight on the head pin to punch out the middle, but it didn't deflect enough to take anything but those other two pins. So 90 after 7 for Justin. That again. Another split. And that's the 4, or 3, 4, 6, 7. Some wood on the right side. Think the wood will help, Matt? 
Maybe. He's going there. We really wanted to split the yeah, it was too three and six. I think he's too full on that one, yeah. He's getting fired up here. Yeah. And a seven, another seven bucks. Two in a row for Justin, 97 after eight, after a 74 half. I was watching you do that during your match, um, and I commented on that because that's something I do too, and I need to do more of it. And I watched you very consciously step back after a couple of tough boxes, and then you came back on fire. All right, box nine. That's not too bad. He's looking for a backdoor strike. And it's not going to happen. But one three, after coming in on where was he? The three or the two four is about where he hit it, I think. Yeah, that three can move quite a little bit though. Away from that. Yep. And Justin expressed his displeasure at the pins. Tough. The last few boxes, he was just too full on the head. Pin. He tries to play it off the head pin this time, give himself a good spare lead because it, it's very frustrating to be in that situation because he's throwing a pretty decent ball and he's just getting split, split, chop, you know, things like that. And that's it, it can become extremely frustrating, but you got to do your best to just stay on it. That's one thing I like about watching Justin Bull because he expresses his frustration. But his bowling speaks that I'm still on this. Yeah. I'm still playing. So he was on the head pin that time and he left a three and a six just pretty much themselves. It should get the object finish and go. And there it is. Spare in the tenth, one sixteen in a ball. You know what Justin, even when he's getting fired up, he can still make those shots. Yeah. He can come right back. And so not as big of a half as his first half, but look at all those red. And, and, and the score that we see here, uh, red indicates a, a split, and I think there was more than two. On the fill, puts in six. And that gives Justin a 122 strength for game three. And Timmy comes up now. He's halfway through the match. And he's at 60 plus a ball, if I can see around the score sheet. Yep, 60 plus this ball. And he's on the two pin. Didn't get a uh, half worcester. It looked like it might be when it started. Yeah, he's put six in the fill, folks. So closes his half at 66. And he's got the one, three, four, seven, no wood. Look at that. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Very gently. I give that one back. <laughs> I don't know, he is object. We're just used to seeing everything Timmy hits just flying like crazy. Exactly. You know, and so that one went a little slow. You may not like how they fell, but it's a spin. Yeah. Now he, he, he pays back the bowling gods and uh, gets two in the fill for 78 after six. And he's got the half of Worcester left to go. And I'm sorry, my memory's failing me, but one of these guys made that just a little bit ago. I think it was Justin. Justin, right? Justin yeah. yeah. Ouch. Oh. Hit the head pin. It looked like he was trying to take it on the inside. wood he's going to use, I guarantee it. Watch. Yep. Eight box, 86 after seven. He's only down four in this game. But don't forget he's down 20 in the match in completed games. So, he needs to make up some ground still. Got room for three marks in this game. Oh, little light. Yeah, he came in pretty straight on that one on the one three pocket and he took out five. He's got the diamond left and the 10 pack. 
So no. you throw a ball like that, you expect a better lead. I think that can go. I mean, if you come in on a diamond and splash it out, hope it goes to the 10, I think. Pretty good. Well, he's on it, but it didn't take out the back two of the diamond, surprisingly. So just try to get a nine out of this, maybe. Why not oh. a 10? <laughs> what a shot. Now that's just showing off. <laughs> that was a great shot. What was that, the uh, 4, 8, 10? Yes. 96 after 8, one pin game. Alright, now he, he has a 7, 10 split. He's got some wood. I think off the 7. What do you guys think? I might take a chance and play that wood in the middle. In the middle wood? Dan, what do you think? If you can cap it just to the left and the right there, maybe. He's going in the middle. Uh, he punched each rope bit straight. Yeah. So he he very, very slim target. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking if you kind of capped on the left, which I think he's going to do right there, I, it, it moved it. So, nine box, 106, one pin down in the game, but he's up against a 16 box. So if he wants to catch up, he needs a strike. Well, he can't. I don't know if he can catch up in this game, but he can get ground. Broke up the split. He's on the head pin. He's left with the triangle right, which is the three, five, six. No wood. There you go. Spare in the tent for Tim Douglas, and that gives him 115 plus this ball. It's a close game. Strike here, we'll get a few pins back. He's got one more mark than Justin, I'm counting. Right? No, same marks. Six in the fill, and that gives Timmy 20, 121 to 122. Justin gains a pin. We'll give you the scores here in a second. So for totals, right now Justin's at 385 and Tim Douglas is at 364, so it's a 21 pin game in favor of Justin Water. Coming into game four. So far nobody's thrown a really big game. We've seen both these guys throwing a 160s. Uh, Justin this year threw a 192 game in this house. Two pins under the house average or house record. He didn't like that as soon as it left his hand. No, you know what? They're all together. It's a spare lead. Yeah, it's it's it just. I think a strike ball in the right pocket should take it. There's always a chance of something may not go though. Oh, and that that's what you worry about in that situation. Is if something just decides to stay up, and in this case, it was the eight. So Justin threw that 192 earlier this year in league play. Just missed the house record of 194, which is owned by Jake Cook, whose father happens to be here tonight. And that's a 10 box. All that spurted out before between the balls. Oh, you like that? That's pretty good. Can't talk as fast as Paul Grant, but. <laughs> All right, so 10 after one. On the three pin again, half Worcester right, just two. We know this guy can make that spin though. See if he can do it again. Now he's off on the other side. It's a pretty good splash on that one, and but still leaves a one in the eight pin. Oh, he brushed it, and there it goes. Ten box. He hit it legit. Should have gone. 20 after two in game four for Justin Waters. The winner of this match will move on to the championship of the ACSTA division against Keith Beaupre, who beat Dan Chenard the other day for their, the North Championship 
595 to 534. Justin, first ball. He's on the head pin. He leaves a three and a six. No wood. I thought that was going to be a spread eagle. And that's this guy. Came in pretty full. Good break. Nice spare lead. He's got to capitalize on it. He goes off. A little off balance. Yeah. I caught that, so he kind of leaned down a little bit and leaned to the right, and it carried through for his ball. It was real subtle. It wasn't a lot, but enough to move the ball. Okay, looking for a 10 box. And it's a 9 box. 29 after 3 for Justin Waters. for a hammer here, just like he did last time. You can feel it building up when he's going to get there. Box four. Oh, it sure looked like one. I thought you predicted it, Dan. Nine drops. So you can feel it, though. I mean, it's, it's like he, he's missing it. You can tell it's coming. All right, so six pin only. And that's gone. First spare of this string for Justin. 39 plus a ball after four. Couldn't tell if that wood was frozen or was going to go in on So if he gets a... I was looking straight at it thought he was going to mess it on the so... <laughs> It's a big fill and a mark here. He'll be back. That's a big fill. That's exactly what you want to do after being open for three boxes. And uh, Justin sits down on 59 plus two balls. Not a bad ending to this. And it was all about pinning when he wasn't getting the, the spares. He only left one pin up and just kept hammering away at getting the pins down. All right. Timmy's coming up with a 21 pin deficit in the match. He needs to come in hard and often. And he's on the head pin. Avoids a spread eagle, but he's got three on the right and a two pin. So he's got to make that two pin move. Let's see if that one in the back helps it off. It seemed to hurt him more than it helped him. I, I, it to left the 10 pin up. I thought that 10 was given. Now he's got the 210 to shoot at. And it's probably an easy shot for Tim. Nope. Missed the object pin, so it's an eight box to start the fourth game for Tim Douglas. And again, he's trying to make up 21 pins. Head pinned slightly to the left, and he's left with a check mark left, and that would be the three, five, six, ten. Like a great ball going out. Still sparely. Oh yeah. Just get on that middle pin. And he thought he missed it. Yep. It. But it went. The ten pin hesitated, but it went down. So it gives him eighteen plus a ball after two boxes. All right, this is a fill ball. He's using the same ball again, isn't he? Yeah, I didn't notice that. Okay, not what he wanted to do. He went off to the left a little bit and just punched out two. For, but that ties him in the game with Justin. He's at 20 after two. Oh! If the pin was listening to the crowd, wow. that would be a spare. Unbelievable. Great shot, lots of action, and the three pins somehow survived the onslaught of the wood. Nine box, 29 after three. Tied with Justin for this game. Down 21 in a match, and now he's up against a 20 box and a strike that's still open. So, must mark to catch up. Great 
ball. Well, that'll work. That was an explosion. So he matched Justin Spare in the fourth with a strike of his own. And the pin setters reeling in shock from that impact and taking a minute to come back. Thought we might have to send Dan down there to fix it. I'm fine and Steve will be out. They're gonna come back. <laughs> okay. In attendance is Steve Renault and Brian Fournier. Box five. And Justin called it that would be a second one, but it ended up not surprisingly. So eight in the first ball, four and a seven left. And there you go. So Justin put up a spare, then a strike, and Tim put up a strike, then a spare. And they are both at 59 plus a fill at the halfway point, but Justin's got two balls to put on his fill. And he has a 21 pin advantage in the match. Okay, we're coming into box six, game four. Justin's on a fill. That ball looked better than that to me but he took, put six in the first. Four, seven, nine, ten. Where are you going, guys? Interesting shot here with that wood. I think you gotta play the piece of wood in front for the left yeah. side or the right side. I'm thinking right, what are you guys thinking? I would actually try the left because the piece of the back that might help keep the ball kicking left to take out the uh, forward side. That's what he was doing. But that's seven and a fill for a 66 half, and now he's got three to clean up for seven ten. No was He was probably trying to go to the left side. Yeah, just cross the middle. One place you don't want to see. Eight box, 74 after six. Dan's keeping a count of head pins, spares, splits. Anything you're seeing, noticing here? Both hit the head pin four times. Justin was off the head pin the first two boxes and left out and got ten times. So that's a good thing. Timmy Lee's been off the head pin two to too well. That's a little difficulty. All right. The castle. There's the left castle. Now that, as happened in this box, occurs typically with a pretty decent head pin hit. And you get those three and usually a piece of wood out in front that isn't going to be too much help. As I said, you got to play it though. I was fortunate. So a week last week, um, I got the castle right with no wood, and I went to the inside and took it off the wall and actually got the spare. That's right. I yeah. do remember you. Yes. I was like, oh, "Wow, oh, the shot! Beautifully done. A five and a seven, no wood. Great ten box. So every pin counts in this, and he needs." You know, they both want all the tens, and that's what, that's what, look at this game. You've got 10, 10, 9, 19, uh, 15, or no, 17. Great penning. A lot of times the penning is the difference. Yeah, they're not leaving many pins up there at all. And just not letting, you know, something like that, which is a tough shot. You took out six. It's left with a one, three, four, seven. No wood there. I don't, I don't think that back wood's really going to help unless it comes off the wall. Yeah. What a, yeah, shot. what a shot! All right, a nice spare. That was not easy. Ninety-four in a ball after eight. These bowlers are just fighting through here. We're not seeing any huge games yet, but we're seeing a lot of bare knuckles brawling with the pins. Okay, he's in a right hand pocket. He's got nine in the fill. 103 after eight, and just a seven pin. The stripey seven pin. I 
kind of helpful because sometimes that stripe draws your eye. The wood's moving forward here, so. No, I don't think he wants that either. That's not enough room to get by it, but. Oh, he went to the left. Missed everything. So open in the ninth. So Justin's giving himself some motivational spot speaking up there. And the wood deflected it. So it's a nine box. 112. I think uh, that wood just got missing a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, that often happens because you'll get the wood like that. It's like you get in your head, okay, I want to stay to the left of that wood. Then you go a little too far left. And then you come back at it and you're on the wood. It's really aggravating. So he wants to finish with a big one here. Yeah, he's at 112 after 9. He's got a 21 pin match or lead, but he's pulling Tim Douglas. And Tim Douglas gets can explode at any moment. And put up, uh, he did this in a match I was there with Linehan. He put up like six or eight marks in a row, just all of a sudden, for like a 166 game. And that was it. Both these guys can do that easy. Oh, unbelievable. What a shot. Unbelievable that that didn't go. But the nine pin stuck. So he'll be open in the 10. He's over 120. His average is 127, so he's a little under his average right now. But a nine box for a 121 game for Justin Waters for game four. Again, he's still enjoying a 21-pin lead in the match so far, not counting the first half. And uh, Timmy's got an opportunity here. If he can throw four, you know, three or four marks here, which he's very capable of doing. Starts with his first ball. He's on a fill, 59 plus this ball. And that ball is an eight. Is it going to be a nine? It's a nine. Oh, wow. That's that huge. Nice. He broke the 7-10 split, and now he gets to shoot at just the 7. He's a 68 at the half, two pins ahead of Justin. So a great answer to that spare strike combination. And he misses a 7-pin. Can't believe that. That way, try for the wood on the line. <laughs> I've been known Lenny to do that when Lenny I get. Hand's not hand. <laughs> <laughs> I've been known to do that. So we've seen some great matches. This is the last match we'll have in the um, South South Conference before the championships. We've seen some great matches this year. Absolutely, some wonderful bowling. So Tim wow. throws a bomb there. He's in the pocket. He's left with the five and seven. So the Atlanta Candlepin Singles Tour, and all three of us here are members and bowl in, in, a, in a tour, is, uh, is a lot of fun. There's 32 bowlers in each division, 16 in the north, 16 in the south. So Tim's on the 5-7, open in the 7th. And uh, you, we, you bowl against bowlers of, of your skill level, and uh, it's a traveling tour. Um, every two weeks you have a match. And you bowl scratch against another bowler one on one, five games, and it's it's been it's been my this is my third or fourth year in it, and uh, made a lot of new friends, met a lot of new bowlers, yeah. bowled in a lot of new houses. I haven't made the playoffs, but um, I will. Absolutely, the day's yeah. coming. <laughs> and um, so, if you're interested in it, we right now we've got three divisions, and we're opening up a fourth division going into next season. The D division, and um, it, uh, when spare I by Tim. so spare Great by Tim, Tim in the eighth, ninety-eight plus a ball. So when I started this, and Matt, how, you you were in this for a few years. Did you do this this year? Or you did. I, I didn't enter it this year, but I was I was doing it the first year we did, it. and I really enjoyed it. Um, I like I said, traveling. We only had about twenty bowlers at that time too. Yeah. And now we've got 96 bowlers competing oh, in this. Wrong so much. Thanks to the work, hard work of a lot of people. 
Danny Finn. Danny Finn, the commissioner. Oh, wow. How each, did that each, not go? each division has a treasurer who handles all the funding. Anthony Karen in the C. Um, Paul Atkinson in the B. And I can't remember who's doing Rich it now. So they handle the dues, they handle the payouts. Timmy puts up a 10 box for 117 after nine. So. He gets a big mark here to make things interesting going into the fifth game. Oh yeah. He puts up another spare strike or something similar and this is big. Another split. We're getting a lot of splits, aren't we, Dan? Now, not so much. We've had a, quite a few in the first couple of games. I, I wouldn't be surprised if this one goes right off the red line. Yeah. Oh, went little, straight little through. Far right. yeah. So he'll be open in box 10. So he'll pick up a little bit of the, on the gap, but he's still going to be down. And again, the seven pin, I think those guys are going to start throwing overhand at the seven pin. <laughs> Where's Mike Smith when we need him? Mike Smith is a bowler in the C division. He came in partway through the season, or toward the end of the season this year, and Mike is a friend of mine, bowls with me on Friday nights. He's a former major league pitcher, and sometimes I joke with him about, you look like you're ready to pitch that overhand. He's, he's, he, he could do it. Anyway, so at, that game is 126 to 121 in favor of Tim. And by my count, Tim picks up five pins, and that puts Justin ahead by 16, right? And we had Justin's first ball in the final game of this match. And he's got the castle right, the 5, 6, 10, and some wood in front of the right hand. Did he make it work? Oh, that's right where you want to hit it. You see, see what I mean about that wood? It's usually yeah. kind of funky. That's Sometimes, there's, often there's two pieces. Another piece, there's another piece that'll be way out somewhere else like we see here. And then you got one that's somewhere in there that usually aggravates you. And then that's eight exactly bucks. where Justin wanted it too. So just hit it that left side of that wood. See if you can take two pins on the right, bounce it off the wall, take the five. But it just went off the wall and came back yeah. and didn't do anything. Which is why people see that and they're going to start saying, damn it, Castle. <laughs> that's what my fraternity brothers used to say to me at meetings all the time. <laughs> all right. Great wall. And there's a strike for Justin Waters. How many strikes has Justin got? That makes four. Four strikes. Okay, that's life for him. Both have four. Tim has one every game. That, that one looked like a strike the whole way. Yep. So right now, Justin's job is to keep Tim from coming back and taking the lead in the final game. Get two. And there's a double strike. First one we've seen in this match. And I won't say wow. <laughs> no. I know, Paul, you're going to be watching this, so that was aimed at you, buddy. <laughs> All right, so two strikes. So 18, 28, 38, plus a fill of some sort here. Almost a triple, one pin short of a triple strike. He puts 19 in a fill on the first strike, so he's at 37 after two. 47, 56 plus this ball in this in the third box. Why not a spare on double strike? 57 after three, 67 plus a ball after four. Exactly the size that Justin wanted to start with here in the 15. And I have a hunch he's going to put a bomb on here. Another explosive ball, and he puts nine in the fill for 76 after four. He's over 80 on the half. And there it is, four in a row. Two strikes, two spares, 86 plus a ball at the half. That's a half, guys.
got a potential 96 and a half if he hits a strike in the sixth box. I want to jinx him, but. I will have. You know, Tim can do the same exact thing. Look at this ball. On the head pin. Oh, there we go. And there's there a goes. strike. Here we go. All right. We're coming down to the finale. I hope you stuck around to see this game because I have a feeling we're going to see fireworks. Perfect ball by Tim does this right there. Amazing how both these bowlers punch time and they both step up big. They're hugely clutch. I saw Justin Tuesday night throw like a 40 something half and come out with like a 150. You know, he just. They don't quit. Okay, half Worcester left, two in the first fill ball. But he's got two. You can catch both of ball with this upcoming weekend at the uh, Mixed World at the Beetle Lane in Nashville. Look at that. Just about picks up the spare on the half Worcester, but he puts eight in the fill on a strike, so 18 is start. And he'll have an eight box, so he's at 26 after two. So he's down 11 in the game so far. He needs to mark like crazy right now because he's up against strikes, spare, spare. Both spares. Well, the first spare had a nine fill on it. Okay, he's on the head pin. And that's nine. Looked like he was coming in a little full to me. He was going to punch, but he's got so much power. It's a way to the problem. No, it isn't. You got it. Spare in the third. He's looking to put a couple more big marks up here because he's got to catch up. After four games, we're at 506 to 490, so it's a 16 pin game and completed games. Justin threw a huge half there. Okay, on the fill on the fourth. Ball, All right, there it is. What did I tell you, folks? We're going to have fireworks here. Strike on spare. What a huge strike that was. Critical. He needs to really take advantage of the fill here to catch up because he's up against that 86 half, probably, probably over 90. Got to make up 16 pins at the same time, so you got to keep even and get ahead. And he's only got a few boxes left to do it. I like this waiting for the, that ball to come back. <laughs> it lets you, you know, settle in a little bit. Keep the pace. Not overthink things. All right, powerful ball. He knew, he knew as it went down that it was going to be off and not another strike, but he put sixth in the first. Fill ball, four horsemen left. Eight fill. Be open in the fifth. 64 after four. And Justin's expanded his lead right so far. Wow. He takes the one seven with the one pin the head pin off the wall. 74 half. And would you believe it's 74 half and you're behind? Unbelievable. But totally believable with these guys. So these two, absolutely. <laughs> We're coming down to the last half of the game, of the match. Justin looking to preserve his 16-pin lead, not counting what he's got so far this half. He's at 86 plus this ball. And that ball's a nine, almost a strike, 95 half. So he just added 21 pins to his lead. Just a seven pin, which gave him trouble before. Not this time. Five marks in a row for Waters. Two strikes and three spares. All three spares were nine drops. So he's either throwing strikes or dropping nine. Makes it look easy. Talked about seeing a big game here. I think we might see one. We're going to see it now. All right, that's the first ball right. he's thrown since the first that wasn't a 9 or a 10. He puts 6 in the fill for 111 after 6 boxes. 
first one shot on the head pin this game as well. And a 1 3 4 7 to shoot out. Oh, oh, just chips off the head pin. Three more left. And he's picking up, trying for the two. He picks up one, eight box, 119 after seven. Three boxes to go for Dustin. Box eight, first ball, 37 on the last one. Full on a head pin, three and one. Playing the inside or the outside, guys? Yeah, that's the point. If I'm just, I'm just trying to get the pins. Yeah, that's what he really needs to, but he, I know he's got in his heart that he wants a big game. All right. Oh, let's go! Maybe. Oh, Oh, lots of lots of encouragement from the people here, but uh, the seven doesn't go. So, yeah, I think you're, you're right. I mean, strategically, he just needs to pin out. Ten box, one twenty nine after eight. It never hurts to put up a one fifty one sixty game. Two boxes left for Justin. 129 after eight. Oh, wow. Wrapping around a four pin, everything but the four goes, another nine drop. It gives him a little guide. Yeah. Even if he misses left, it goes. As you called it, he was right on the red line. When he throws it, he goes, oh, no. <laughs> so a spare in the ninth gives Justin 139 plus well, this ball. I do the same thing all the time. Oh, no. Sometimes, oh, no is a nice way to say it. Yeah, too. yeah. And then you go, oh, never mind. I got it. All right, he's on the fill ball in the 10th box, last box of his game. And he's on a two pin, just puts four in the fill for 143 after nine. And he's got the one, three, four, six, seven, nine. Kind of a mess. A lambda plus two. How do you like that? All right, he'll be open in the tenth. But that puts him at 150. Figure out what Tim will need to, to have a chance here. And a nine box for Justin Waters closes out the championship round of the A South Conference with a 152 game. 658 total. 658 total. Timmy's going to need a 95 half to win and a 94 half to tie. All right, so 94 would give him 168, right? Yeah, so he needs 168 to tie, 169 to win. He's got a 74 half, so as you said, he needs that 90 something half. So, first of all, he's on a three pin, he drops seven, he's got the one, two, four. Needs marks all the way through. There's one. There we go. I mean, I, I'm just guessing, but I think he probably needs four or five points. A couple strikes wouldn't hurt. Yeah. Yep. So if I was betting on somebody to put up a 90 plus half, this is one of the guys yeah, that'll do it. This would be one of them. Absolutely. It was anybody that can. Yeah. On the fill. Wow, look at that action. Puts eight in the fill. Got a chance here. He's got some favorable wood. He's got the two and the ten with wood in front. Is that the two or the four? Am I mistaken? That is the four. Four pin. Four ten. 
92 after 6. Whoa. Send it over. Oh, my goodness. I think that's exactly where I wanted it to. Maybe a little hard. I think if you threw a little softer ball, it wouldn't have flown as far. All right, 9 box. 101 after 7. Three boxes to go. And he's got to come up with about 60-some pins right now. Three boxes. Anything's possible to me. That's a good ball going. All right, he needs this mark, and then he needs a double strike probably. So that's the a piece of wood is, is close to being on the line. I'm not sure I like that you wood. Want me to check it to me? All right, so Dan's going to go down and check to see if that wood's still in play. It's really critical because I'm not sure that angle looks great, but he says it's good. All right, so he's got the... It's not a great angle, but I think you have to play it. Wow! Oh, it's what a shot! Wow. Casually walks that off like, yeah, that was easy. No big deal. Spare in the eight. 111 plus a ball. He needs strike. Really needs to strike out here. Oh, that's gonna do a bid. That probably does it. I haven't done the math, but that probably does it. But seven in a fill. 118 after eight, and the two four six. Woo! That's a good bid on it. Open in, in the ninth, and uh, Justin Waters is going to be your eighth self winner. And a 10 box, 128 after nine. One box to go. He's mathematically eliminated, but he's got a box to finish up. A couple of fantastic competitors to absolutely want a match. And Tim throws a great ball, but he's got the castle right. Hope he doesn't blame me for that. Yeah, no luck this last half. He's no. been all over the pocket. Yeah. No luck at all. Had a great season. And there's a spare. What a shot to close it out. 138 plus this ball. Probably going to be over 140. He's throwing a really good game, too. I see a lot of splits up there. And uh, Spread Eagle minus a 10 pin. Tim Douglas closes a 143. And the winner of today's match is Justin Water, who will be the A South Conference champion, going ahead to face Keith Beaupre in the AACST A Division champion. Oh, well, I'm going to get harassed by some friends before we close out here. So thanks, everybody, for joining us. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. And a great match. And watch uh, for the championship round. Thank you. Live mic. Was that, did that go well? Yeah, that worked well with three. I think so. Well, it's, uh, it's been a pleasure to be here. Thank you.